Hey, good morning. It's uh, bed talk number two for me. If you're not familiar with the concept of bed talks, it was established by my Pink Goldfish co-author, uh, David Rendell. The format is simple, less than five minutes, uh, not rehearsed, you can't sell, you have to be helpful and just make it unscripted and uh, offer some value. So as speakers, as we're not traveling, this is a way just to simply share our message. Um, I love this. I, I yesterday did the bed talk challenge. So I, I called out a few people and asked them to create, create videos. Um, first off, this is the one that, uh, that I did yesterday inspired by, by Dave. Um, and then I love this. Uh, we had, let me show you here. We had right here, soon to be uh, Purple Goldfish promo edition, Red Goldfish promo edition co-author, Roger Burnett did a talk, um, really talked about trust, which is really cool and how, how trust is important right now. Um, Sharon Delaney McLeod, I love this. She jumped in yesterday. She responded to the challenge. Um, she did a great talk about embracing this time, embracing the pause. And then last but not least this morning, I love this, Laura Burgles stepped in and Laura talked about um, really trying to understand what keeps your, your clients up at night. Uh, not, not everything matters the same and you need to be answering the questions that keep them up tonight. So um, let me have a little coffee and then I'm gonna launch into my bed talk for the day. I wanna talk today about pressure and pressure is something I think we're all feeling right now. And I think it's only gonna ratchet up and get worse, to be honest. I think we're not even close to where we're probably gonna be at this time in, in April and maybe even this time, this time of the month in May. And so I wanna, and pressure is something that in my, in my latest book we really delved into. And it was a great education for me, specifically how does our brain um, handle, how is our biology made up to handle pressure? And essentially what, what we shared is that there's three distinct parts of the brain. And the, the first part of the brain is the smallest part of our brain. It's the oldest part. Uh, it's called the amygdala. And it's sometimes referred to as the lizard brain uh, because it's the only part of the brain that a reptile has. And it's pretty small. It's actually the size, if you can believe this, the size of an almond. And um, it only has one job. And that job is to constantly, 24-7, 365, to scan the environment and look for one thing, threats. Um, something that threatens our, our life, in essence. Um, and then there's the, the second part of the brain. So if the, if the amygdala is right at the base of our, the, the stem of our brain, there's an area that surrounds the, the amygdala. It's called the limbic system. And the list, limbic system is responsible for regulating all of our bodily functions. So our heartbeat, our breathing capacity, um, even our sweat glands. It's also the place in our brain where long-term memory is stored. Um, the third part of the brain for, for us as humans is the biggest and essentially the newest part of our brain. It's called the neocortex. And this is the, the thinking part of the brain. It's the thing that makes us truly humans as human beings. So this is where art and language and higher level reasoning um, is, is within us. Now, and it's the, and it's the thing that makes us rational, uh, but 
But here's the challenge, and this is how it relates to pressure, is that we act pretty rationally as human beings until our amygdala senses a threat in the environment. And unfortunately, our amygdala, um, it doesn't make a difference between an actual threat to our lives and a threat to our identity. Um, and so what happens is when it, it detects a threat, it sends signals to the limbic system and the limbic system immediately starts to flood the body with chemicals. Our heart rate can increase, our breathing can start to get labored. We may even start to feel panicked or, or start to sweat. And here's the big thing. The limbic system essentially shuts down, shuts down the neocortex. And we start to act in a way that's anything but rational. Um, we start to act in a way that is panicked. Now, we, we all respond to behavior differently. There's four kind, kind of strategies. All of us default to one. That's not the message of today. The message of today is to understand that when we get triggered, we need to be aware of that feeling of being triggered and feeling that pressure. And here's the thing, we can't control that. That's millions of years of biology there. There's no way you can su suppress that or not succumb to those feelings. But I think what we can do, and this is the lesson, is we can develop a keen sense of awareness that we're being triggered. And if we can just take the time to kind of step back, uh, take a few deep breaths, understand how our biology is affecting us, we can probably um, wait till that calms down and end up acting a lot more rationally and not making bad decisions or, or feel panicked. I'm gonna leave you with, with one of the quotes that we shared in, in this book about pressure. And it comes from Austrian neuroscientist and Holocaust survivor, the late Viktor Frankl. And Frankl uh, said something I think that's so prophetic. He said, between stimulus and response, he said, there is space. And he said, in that space lies our ability to choose how we respond. And that choice, within that choice, lies our growth and our freedom. So I wish you all the best. I hope we all act rationally under, under pressure and we can be aware of when we feel like we get triggered. Bed talk number two in the books. Look for a bed talk challenge for five people as a result of this. Thanks.